evening everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm going to be reviewing some coloured watercolour papers today made under the Bockingford line by St Cuthbert's Mill. Now St Cuthbert's Mill are absolutely lovely people and sent me a whole load of Bockingford paper, you know, huge imperial packs of it, and some of their lovely Saunders Waterford which is their 100% cotton paper. Now if you're a fan of um, 100% cotton papers like Ausch or Arches, if you're in the USA and can't pronounce the French properly. It is Ausch, not Arches, as many people say it. It's a town in France. Uh, if you like 100% cotton high-quality papers and you've not tried Saunders Waterford, I highly recommend it. It is really beautiful to paint on. They also do Milford, which I've not tried. I've got samples, but that's coming up. And that is a replacement for the old Watman watercolour papers that I understand Watman used to make. Um, I use Watman paper all the time, actually, for chromatography and filtration in my proper job as a scientist. So I'm used to Watman's products, but I didn't know they made watercolour paper. There you go. They don't anymore. Buy Milford if you liked it. Now, the reason I'm here, this little sketch here, totally unoriginal. I didn't come up with this image or the colour scheme or anything else. This is from... This is from um, an interpretation of something Peter Sheeler did, and I'll link to his channel because he does really, really beautiful urban art and these painted line drawings. And I haven't really done this technique very much, where you draw in pen and then you just sort of paint over and roughly indicate you know, that sky shape there where I've got those brushwork really is just a sort of suggestion that there might be sky. And I was given about 10 years ago a beautiful, beautiful original watercolour of a church in Bulgaria, which was painted in 1999 by an artist whose name I can't read. And I think I'll post that on my blog at some point so you can see it. And if anyone can read his name or tell me who it was who painted it, I'd love to know because I really, really like it and I'd love to get more stuff by the same artist. Anyway... It's very much in this style, so I thought it would be really cool to learn to work in this way. So last night, I couldn't sleep. I've been having terrible trouble recently with regulating my body temperature. I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, as many of you know, and part of that is something called dysautonomia, where your autonomic system, the part of your body that controls temperature, blood pressure, and all of those things, just doesn't function properly. And we have sort of flares where... I couldn't get out of bed till 7 o'clock yesterday evening. I just felt terrible. I was drinking gallons of water, trying to cool down, and it just wasn't working. I feel a lot better now. Eating a lot of salt generally helps us, you know, to recover from a flare. And um, I got through it. But anyway, I couldn't sleep. I felt absolutely terrible. So I got up, and I got Peter's channel out, and I just had a go at this, just for fun. And I sketched it. And it's just on a Cotman watercolour postcard. Nothing special at all. But then I remembered that the lovely, lovely people at Bockingford sent me a whole load of samples of these really small sheets of paper. They are £140, so 300 gram per square metre, cold press paper. And they sent me a little stack of them, and I haven't yet worked out what I want to do with them because, you know, I could guillotine the logo off and use them as the fronts of cards or as gift tags, and that's probably what I'm going to do. But in amongst them were a set of five coloured papers, and I thought I'd show these to you because they're really cool. So there's an eggshell. I'll show you them individually in a moment. A grey, a blue. I'll pick them up and put them so the lighting is correct. Ah, blue, cream, and oatmeal. And... You can buy them in quarter and half and full imperial sheets via Amazon and so on. So to go through them, oatmeal, um, I mean, I'm going to have to colour correct this because the light's a bit bright. If I actually shine bulb through it, you get a fair idea of what it looks like. It's kind of a creamy, it's a creamy grey, really. It's kind of hard to describe. The colours on these are so subtle. And on the back, they've got quite a different texture and colour. The eggshell is a much more greenish kind of tone. It's a green-blue, and again, if I hold it up to the light... There is the light, there it is. Um, you can see the green through it. 
the cream kind of speaks for itself. It's it's an off-white, but it's lovely and warm. It's got a lovely warmth to it, as you can see. It's a very warm cream, and I'm quite interested in that for sunsets. The blue is exactly what it says in the tin, a lovely cool blue. The grey is just a dingy old grey that the light won't even get through. So that's really much, much more opaque paper. And I had a piece of white just to just to compare them with. So what I thought would be really cool, because the papers to me already suggest mood, let me get back to where I am, what I thought I'd do is I'm going to paint out this same image or, or an element of that image on all of these different papers with, with a white as a control. And I'm going to lay them all out here on my easel. And then what I thought I'd do is paint all of them in exactly the same way, in exactly the same colours, and see how they turn out in terms of mood. Like, does the one on the cream sort of sunset paper look like a sunset image? Does the one on the blue paper look like a winter image? How is it going to impact it? So I just thought it'd be a really cool way to find out what do these coloured papers really do? Because I've never used coloured watercolour coloured watercolour paper. And if I've got space on the same paper, I thought I'd do a little doodle in gouache and just see how it works with a more opaque uh, colour, because I thought that could be quite interesting, um, given that a lot of the work in this is very, very translucent, thin glazes. Just to explain the colours that were used in this, I mean, you can go over to Peter's channel, which, of course, I'll link to. There's a yellow ochre wash over the background, and then it's layers of burnt sienna. He uses phthalo blue, but I use cerulean blue, which is a cobalt pigment in the Winsor & Newton professional range. And I just, it was cobalt stannate, I think it is. It just gives a much more sky blue than phthalo blue does. And I also didn't know whether he'd used phthalo blue green or phthalo blue red or phthalo sapphire. So I thought, you know, I'll, I'll just use what I have. Uh, sepia is used mixed in down here with other colours to give this kind of brown grey and, and other shades. And there's burnt sienna there giving that lovely orange on the steps and the roofs of the houses and so on. And that's really it. I mean, this was never intended to be anything special. For me, it was just a little sketch. Try the technique out, see whether I liked it. And I kind of enjoyed it. I kind of enjoyed painting in that image. It was very much, for me, like no line watercolour or painting in a stamped image because I didn't have to think too much when painting and I could enjoy the painting in a very free way because the image was already there. The story I wanted to tell is already there. You know, that brickwork is already suggested by that line. That balcony is suggested by those lines. And I could just paint a solid block of colour. I didn't need to do any more. And that's really quite relaxing and quite freeing. It's like using a colouring book. So I think I might do this more often, particularly in this format on little postcards. Because I can give them to people and I can use them as postcards. And I did a bit of spatter here for Lindsay. Frugal Crafter cannot paint anything without spattering on it, it seems. So I thought, you know, I don't usually like doing it, so I did. Um, Jen Maguire, actually, Jennifer Maguire, Inc., um, doesn't like spatter either. She's a control freak like me. And she found a really, really cool set of stamps that I'll see if I can find a UK vendor for that are like spatter but stamps. So if you like the effect but you want the control, you can just stamp um those effects in which I thought was a really really cool way to kind of get around that so that's the image I'm not going to use a direct version of it I'm probably going to take an element from within this image maybe draw that out on all of the papers over the next 24 hours paint all of them and I'll show you various steps of that journey and my thoughts along the way as I thought that'd be pretty cool if you want to try these papers out you can actually buy a trial pack for £10 which gives you two sheets of each of the five colours and they are quarter imperial sheets. So that's kind of a three size. So for £10 for that quality watercolour paper, it's actually really good value for 10 A3 sheets. You can buy that on Amazon, and I'm going to put that in the description below. There are some brilliant deals on Amazon at the moment on paint-related products, so really do check them out. You can get some fantastic discounts right now. And I love Bockingford. It's my everyday paper. It's the one I use just for everything. Sure, I use Cotman for sketching just when I haven't tried anything before. Here's an example of it. Or for testing out a colour palette or whatever. And I use Strathmore when I'm painting something I want to give to someone or to sell. But I really like Bockingford. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a great paper. 
to my everyday paper, but I'm really curious about these tinted pages. You can really see the colours there really well. They're subtle, but they're really very beautiful, and I just want to find a way to use them, because I've had them for about two or three months now. There, you can really see that greeny duck, sh duck egg kind of colour there, the one at the back, and that wonderful grey that's not as dingy as you might expect it to be. But I've been desperately trying to find a use for these, and I'm hoping that this kind of sketch might give me the inspiration I need to actually come up with a reason to use them. Okay, I've just started, and I just wanted to show you my materials so that you know what I'm using. So I've got my paper all stuck out, I've got the white, the oatmeal, the eggshell, the cream, the grey, and the blue, and I'm going to be drawing using a... Pigma Micron size 08 archival ink black pen and that is a half millimeter I can't focus half millimeter line got there eventually um, I like these pens it's not ideal because this is cold pressed paper and this is like a fiber tip sort of pen so it's a little bit scratchy and scrapy and makes a noise it would be better to use a rollerball pen, but this is the only pen I've got that is completely waterproof, so it's what I'm using. You'll note, maybe, if you can see it, that the textures are a little bit different on these papers. Like the white has got a slightly different texture to the oatmeal and the other coloured ones. I wonder whether they're just produced in a different machine and the felts are maybe a bit different. They're all the correct way up. I've checked the watermark and, and the stamping on the front and everything else, and the embossing. They are the correct way up, but for some reason it looks very different. They are all cold press, they are all the same weight, so that's interesting, and I will be asking the folk at St Cuthbert's Mill if they can tell me why that is. In terms of paint, I'm going to be using a synthetic brush. Synthetic brushes don't take up much water, so they're really good when you just want to get a light wash, very little colour. And I'm going to be using a half inch synthetic flat from the Graduate line, which in the USA is the Simply Simmons line from Daler and Rowney. There's nothing special about it, it's just a basic, quite crunchy because I haven't used it for a while, um, half inch synthetic, and that's about the right width for this kind of size picture where I need to sort of be able to see the brush strokes. It's kind of a nice size, I think anything smaller, like a quarter inch or an eighth inch, wouldn't give me those nice brick kind of shapes. So it's big enough to be lazy with and um, not too um, not too small. And the paints I'm using are my usual palettes. I've got four of those of um, Winsor & Newton Professional watercolours. And I've got all the normal paints plus the special editions plus a load of discontinued ones because I really like the paints. And because they are out like this, and they've got glycerine in them, I can re-wet them, and if I don't leave them too long after re-wetting them, I can get a really dilute solution of paint, which makes for those really dreamlike, really thin washes that work so well on this kind of image. So I'm probably going to be copying, actually, most of that, and I'm going to get bored shitless copying this out six times. So I may copy an element of it, I may not do the whole thing, it really depends how it goes going to do it in bits over the next day or so. Okay, so this, if you remember, was what I did previously. Sorry, I'm not using my tripod at the moment, so super shaky. Sorry, just wanted to show you. I've sketched them all out. Um, God, it was boring. Um, no offence to Peter, it's a really beautiful image. But when you have to draw it six times in quite rapid succession, it's really, really boring. It's also really hard to keep uh, proportions quite well because I did the original on watercolour postcard, so it's a rectangular piece, and the Bockingford samples that I have are all square, so I lost a lot of the proportion. I don't have enough room for sky. They look terrible at the moment because they've got no colour. I have actually intentionally simplified them, so I actually cut a lot of the detail from here and simplified them when I transferred them onto the page. And some are different to others, they've got windows in different places, they've got bigger or smaller buildings or different shaped lanterns. The reason is that I just got so bored that I just wanted to get them done as quickly as possible and I didn't really pay as much attention. When I did this original, I probably spent about 10 minutes drawing it. These other ones, I probably spent about 20 minutes drawing the lot, all six of them, so I'm not doing 
six works of art here, guys. I am just trying to show you the mood that you get with different coloured papers when you apply the same colours to a similar image. I want to talk in a moment about those colours. I'm going to swatch them out and I'm going to show you how I'm using them. I want to have some continuity, so I'm going to paint all of them at the same time. I'm going to put um, like all of the yellow ochre onto all six, then all of the blue onto all six, then all of the sepia onto all six, rather than treating them as individuals, because I figure if I do that, the consistency of the washes should be more similar across the whole lot, which will make it more fair, because ultimately the thing we're trying to look at here is colour. We're not really interested in the drawing or the mood the drawing gets, we're interested in what happens to the colour. So just to show you where it is so far, I mean that was done on, on white, um, cold press obviously and this is on a high white I think um, might just be a straight white I think the difference is that this is cheaper paper so it's a bit less white so on plain white it's really stark and actually that would to me I find it really hard to paint sometimes from a line drawing um, on white paper because if I were to sketch out something on canvas and paint acrylic I would have painted a coloured ground to give myself something to take away that stark black white look so i think some ways having a colored ground i.e colored paper can be beneficial because it takes away just that clinical edge to it on the eggshell paper which is this delightful sort of bluey gray or greeny bluey gray you lost a lot of that harshness and i think it would probably be easier to see what you're doing i made a total mess of the pavement when I was doing it so I've just drawn over it and I kind of did the same thing on the one below which was the grey. The grey is pretty dingy actually I have to say the grey is not my favourite to draw on. The blue which doesn't show up very well on camera I'm going to see if I can zoom in and get a proper blue maybe if I put a white next to it you can see you can just about make out that that is actually blue it's a really subtle blue it's quite cold when it's okay. The cream I really like, again, if I put the white next to it for contrast, the cream is actually quite nice to draw on, but the oatmeal I think is my favourite, which is a much yellowier cream, a much richer cream. So just from the drawing perspective, I prefer the oatmeal. If I'm doing line drawings, I think I'm going to start using oatmeal-ish paper. Um, it was much more fun. So I'm going to go away for a few hours now and I'm going to come back to them with fresh eyes. I'm going to prepare my washes and do my painting. But the colours that I'm going to be using are probably yellow ochre, raw sienna, a blue of some kind. It might be cerulean, it might be phthalo. I haven't quite decided which one I'm going to use yet. Might push the boat out and use a weird blue. Um, sepia for shadow and possibly some magenta just to warm up the shadow a little bit in places i'm not quite copying exactly what peter did in his original obviously i have made changes to the image um i should say this version here i got rid of a road sign that he had here and i turned it into a lamp post to reflect this lantern shape here and when i was drawing it i started this is a this is a place in portugal apparently and when i started drawing it I started thinking of it as, as a place in Bravos in the Game of Thrones universe, in so it would be in Essos, which is filmed in Spain, and it's kind of that Mediterranean-style buildings, because what I was thinking was this uh, window here with these awnings below it, and this street with what could be steps behind this kind of horizon, that could be where Arya did that huge jump, um, then went down all the steps with the oranges that she did in one of the season six episodes, so... That could well be Lady Crane's apartment, who knows? And just before anyone comments, yes, I did think that was the most ludicrous plot that Game of Thrones has ever done. And this is a show that has giants and ice people and zombies and all sorts of other stuff in it. But someone with serious abdominal injuries should not be jumping out of windows. It's just not seemly. So when I was doing derivations of it, I kind of went further down that road a little bit and I took out other details like this chimney piece that's in the original. I stopped doing that because that was getting tedious. Um, and various different variations of the lampshades kind of, of the lamp of the lampposts kind of happened just to simplify it because I was getting bored, if I'm really honest. Okay, first layer of colour has gone on. This is yellow ochre, and I'm using Winsor & Newton Professional watercolours throughout. 
So that is 714, I think. And I've just put it on with the brush that I described. This blending over here was just done by using it basically fairly dry brush and kind of scrubbing out the edge to make it blend. And what I've done is I've painted the buildings, the faces of the buildings, except this little one here and the edge of this brick wall. And I've done the same thing on all of the other colours. One thing I did really notice is that the cream has really added a lot of warmth. I mean, it really feels like a different colour, but it's exactly the same. Um, that's really all I've noticed so far. Blue's a bit dingier. One thing I did notice is that this building here always ended up dingy on all of them. And I don't know whether it's because my waterproof pen on those quite densely coloured areas is not as waterproof as it's claiming, or whether it's because when I was shading them, I rather than using my brush this way, I was using it a lot on its side, and whether there was some crap between the bristles that was kind of coming out when I did that. So I've um, I made sure that was the same on all of them. So the next thing I'm going to add is the sky, and I'm going to be using cerulean blue, which is one three seven, which is the um, chromium base. Sorry, the cobalt based cerulean blue, not the phthalo based cerulean blue that you get from other manufacturers. Okay, blue is on. I initially put it on by making this huge puddle of it um, by working on my wet uh, uh, my wet pan or my palette, I guess. Or my, it's not really a pan, it's my paint dried into my palette. I kind of worked that up with water and then made that big wash. And I put that on initially, but it, I realised that this colour really granulates and it was going to dry too pale. So I went back over it by using uh, paint obtained, as you can see here, much darker from my damp pan uh, or my damp paint in my palette on my brush. And with this being a synthetic brush, it just kind of picked it up. So I used that. I'm going to have to use a tissue on this one because I am painting at an angle just really for ease. Um, I'll take a little bit of that off because it's a bit too much. And I've tried to keep that sort of... Um, urban sketch style rough and ready edge um maybe if i can get that paint off yeah i can i can make it look a little bit more rough because my worry is it's too perfect um yeah that's better it's a little bit more like the original intention was to get that urban sketch style obvious brush strokes on the sky which is something that I could tell Peter was really trying to do in his original. So the next thing I need to apply is going to be Burnt Sienna 074 over the faces of the buildings um, that I've already painted to add some extra depth and to make the buildings look different distances away from each other. All right Burnt Sienna is on now. I used it in two kind of different ways. What I did was I used it over this building here and over here and I did this where it's over the top of yellow ochre kind of as a thinner wash and then the roofs of the buildings and this wall a little bit thicker. You can probably see that better on this one where it's much drier. Um, the idea was to have this just to kind of darken that building and then these ones are much more orange and then here I put it on a lot darker. And what I tried to maintain is like the sky with that urban sketch style to make sure I had definite brush stroke endings. Whereas when I did this wall on the left, you can see this one better. In the original layer of yellow ochre, I wanted it to blend. And then the sienna, the burnt sienna is to be blocky like brush strokes. That's kind of part of the style and that's what I was going for. And I really love how the sky is granulating up around the rooftops, which is giving some re really interesting effects. So the next cab off the rank is sepia, and I'm going to be using sepia mixed with variable amounts of cerulean blue to paint in all the other areas, really. So this is the kind of um, bit that brings it all together. Right, these are pretty much done now. Um, let's just go back to the original that I was working from. So this is obviously a copy of Peter Schiller's work, and this had spatter. This had cerulean blue spatter, if you remember. I didn't do that on the ones I've just done, and I didn't add all the detail. I mean, it's not really detail. These are meant to be viewed from a distance. But I didn't add any real shading detail because I didn't want to wait for them to wet. For the wet paint to dry, I wanted to get the review over. So, first comment. Um, 
I did get some tearing of the surface of the paper when I was removing my painter's tape. Now the blue painter's tape I use is the cheapest, crappiest blue painter's tape imaginable. It is really low tack and I always remove some tack on my arm. So for it to tear on dry paper is a bit of a worry, but I've had that with Bockingford before. It does, the surface is a little bit fragile. It's not very good with masking fluid. It's not very good with painter's tape. Sorry, St. Cuthbert's Mill, but it's the truth. It's the one thing I really don't like about Mockingford is that if you take your paper down, you know you're going to have to cut it off ultimately. Uh, and don't even go near it with um, gum tape because you have to cut it off. You can't sort of loosen it and, and keep the edge of the paper. So on white, it looks kind of sunsetty, maybe a bit Mediterranean. Let's go through the colours. Um, eggshell, first of all. Having that green kind of undertone does lift, I think, some of these colours a little bit more, especially around the edges. You get a really nice contrast between the sienna and, and, and that greenish grey. What's really cool is that you don't get it interfering. Even when I used a really pale sienna wash, pale sepia wash here, this almost dove grey that I used, you don't get any interference, so the colour doesn't get in the way, which is a really important point. Something I was worried about, because when we paint watercolour, the paper is our white, so I was really worried about having a tinted white, that it would um, get in the way of my mixing, but it doesn't get in the way of the mixing, it just adds a richness and a subtlety that you don't normally get. The grey, I think, is next. Yep, this is grey, which doesn't show up very well in this lighting, but this is actually a pretty dark, um, pretty dark grey, actually. So you do get quite, again, a nice contrast. I think it adds a richness to the sky where the blue is and the granulation there, so I really like that. And obviously it smooths and enhances, like this pavement I did in a mixture of sepia and cerulean blue, quite a dilute glaze. I tried to keep it very, very light. And I think that compared to the other ones where I've done that, I think the grey paper has kind of mattified it a bit. So instead of having little white speckles showing through here, I've got little grey ones from the paper and that's, that's kind of smoothed that out. So painting with pale grey washes on grey paper seems to work pretty well. The blue paper next, um, pretty pale, subtle blue. I'll just put some white next to it because that helps you to see the actual colour. So you can see it's a really subtle blue frost blue or pine frost i would say again i think it has smoothed out some of these grays a little bit it does add an interest to the sky and a little bit of interesting contrast with the yellows and the oranges but i think the best paper for that so far has been the eggshell of the ones we've looked at so far cream is next which is this almost yellowy orangey really warm cream and that has added a warmth, that has been quite interesting, so that has smoothed out some of these areas instead and has added a little bit of interest where it peeks through in other areas, so I think that adds an overall warmth to the scene. And the oatmeal, which is this much more, um, hard to describe really, but it's kind of a yellowy cream, it's a much, much more yellow colour. And that does actually, I think, really lift some of these colours. Now I'm going to move back and we'll look at them all sort of together. And you can see they have got a very slightly different mood. The one on green, I think, is kind of calmer. On white, it's almost a sunset scene. On green, I think it's just much flatter in a way. These two over here could easily be twilight or, or dawn, I don't really know. Whereas the grey and the blue... It's very subtle, but it does add a kind of... This on grey really reminds me of when you use Copics and you get that really flat finish. So it kind of flattens it out. And actually for the Urban Sketch style, that's really good. So I think the grey paper could be great for Urban Sketch artists where you're going to be painting a lot with grey because you've got roads and so on. And it really makes them look blended and flattened. The blue paper I found quite interesting. It is a little bit cold. Now, these are really hot Mediterranean colours. So, you know, the sky is a very warm sky and these are really warm colours. I don't think it really cools those down a lot, but it does certainly cool down these kinds of areas. So I think if you were painting a scene of, you know, people or something with a lot of white in it, 
just having that there because there's no white in these pictures which is probably a mistake on my part i probably should have used a test um of a painting that had more white in it because then we could see what the difference was and i think i'll paint something on the back of these to do kind of a part two review so kind of the jury's out a little bit at the moment but i really like the oatmeal i like the effect that gives I like the grey, which really surprised me, and I think the others are really nice as well. So I like these tinted papers, but I need to play with them more. So I think I'm going to do a follow-up review in a week or so, when I've had the chance to paint something on the back that has more white in it. Uh, so I'm, going to, I'm not going to call this a part one video or anything, but expect to see a follow-up review coming up later on. But on the whole, you know, they're blocking for paper, which is my everyday paper. It's a great paper if you don't mind the fact that painter's tape doesn't like it too much. The sizing seems to not cope. Doesn't like masking fluid really that well. And you can't be too scrubby or too offensive, let's say, to the paper. Because it's a fairly bog standard paper. It doesn't have the ability to um, take roughness. Now, what you'll note on these pictures compared to... The original is the original I use much much wetter washes much thinner washes and I built up the layers because I had no intention of drying and coming back and everything else these are much richer colors to start with which again has kind of skewed my review but you can see how that sienna there on an eggshell background is different from the sienna on a white background or the sienna on a blue background that really brings out the richness uh, of, the, of that orange. So I think where you use the, the, the tint as a complement, so if you use blue, uh, I guess the complementary colours of blue are going to look much, much more vibrant because you've got the contrast there. So I think that's something I want to play with when I do these paintings on the backs of these to see how they go. And I think I'm likely to buy the pack uh, that I'm linking to below um, my usual disclaimer, I use Amazon affiliate links and I've used UK and US because I now have a US Amazon account. I will link US and UK affiliates so that you can buy these papers and try them out for yourselves. You get two of each colour, total of 10 sheets and certainly the UK pack is A3. So they're pretty big sheets and it's like £10, which is really, really good value for a really high quality watercolour paper. But... That would give you the opportunity to try it and then you can buy individual packs and blocks of different colours and no sorry you can buy half half imperial imperial and quarter imperial sheets and obviously packs of those sheets but you can't buy blocks or pads um of the individual colours there are a couple of vendors that do sell single color pads or mixed color pads uh, kind of as like third party vendors that use this paper in their own brand pads and you'd have to shop around to find those I guess but I have seen some online and I'll, I'll add the details and I'll try and add some photos of kind of close up of these once they're dry so you can really see what the differences are but yeah love the quality of the paper I really like the tints which surprised me a lot and the ones that I ended up liking the most are the grey which I was really not expecting to like the most because it's grey paper I was expecting to enjoy the warm ones, the really nice colours like the oatmeal, but actually that wasn't my favourite. It was actually the colder colours, probably because I tend to like painting in quite warm colours. It's the contrast. That contrast is the key to why these papers are so special. So thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed this. Try these papers out for yourself. If you like using Bockingford paper, they're a really great extension to what you're using. Thank you very much and good evening.